Al Hassan Suhini <laughs> is the member of parliament for the Tamale North constituency. Uh, Al Hassan Suhini, good morning, welcome. Morning, Alfred. Thank you very much for the opportunity to join you. Alfred, okay. I know that my focus or my purpose for being here more has to do with uh, your next topic, but I cannot. Uh, okay, my, I, I thank you for the opportunity. I think that, um, you see, I have been listening to the submissions made earlier, and I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer, but I've been, I've been amazed at the illogicality of, of, of some of the arguments that are put forward. Okay. You see, I'm, I'm going to come to you. Yes. Right? And so you make the comment because I need to hear Professor John Poza. He hasn't spoken on this matter oh, as oh, yet. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, okay. Yes. Okay. But if Prof will allow me to make the point. Well, Thank I would you. want to, <laughs> quick, 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 quick. I want to have a typical <laughs> governance. Absolutely. Yes, because it's absolutely. coming from the so, governance so perspective. So so I, I needed right. to make it that very clear. Yes. You know, I've read, I think that Mama Yaraga couldn't have put it any better. I believe that the three arms of government all draw their powers from the constitution. And fortunately, we all have our terrain or our places of work. And at the right time and on Tuesday, the parliament of Ghana will also exercise its rights as enshrined in the constitution. But you see, did we have to get here? Did we have to get here? Look, we've been talking about democratic tyranny, especially since Nana Kufuado's government assumed power. And I think what the Supreme Court is doing signals the completion of that democratic tyranny that this government has introduced in this regime. We have seen the abuses that the executive have been engaged mm -hmm. in throughout the term, tenure of uh, President Akufuado. We have seen it countless number of times. In fact, I was listening to like people make reference to the Dumoulin case and others, which has be, even been pronounced by the Supreme Court as abuse of the executive. Several abuses by the executive. As if to say that um, Nana Akufuado put a gun to the heads of Ghanaians to become president. I think he's worse than even some of the better from him. No, Alfred, you look at a situation where the judiciary, the judiciary today, have established a certain pattern. There are a number of cases that minority members of parliament have filed before the judiciary, and they are stuck in the courts. A number of them. Me sitting here, I have a case involving the ratification of mining leases. Still stuck in the courts, filed as far back as 2018. Still stuck, not being moved. You have the E. Levy case that the former minority leader and Samuel Okujita Blackwa and others took to court. It's still stuck there. You have the LGBTQ case, the injunction, not the substantive issue, still stuck there. No agency whatsoever is demonstrated on those matters. But every single case that the executive have showed interest in, in relation to the work of parliament, that has gone before the judiciary has seen expedited action. And in most cases, action favorable to the government. Alfred, and people say we should not think that the judiciary is beginning to seem and act and look like an extension of the executive and that when you do that, you are, you, are, you are endangering our democracy. But their actions, that makes it clear that they are beginning to look like an extension of the executive does not endanger our democracy. I mean, are we being rational? That is why the lawyers will tell you that justice is not enough for justice to just be done. And that it must be seen to be done. And so when it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, you cannot convince a lay man, a lay mind that is a miniature. It obviously is a duck. And let me tell you something. The question that Atefa and others haven't been answering is 
what were they seeking to injunct? I mean, to serve on the speaker. What were they seeking to serve on the speaker? Before so that question, yes, they, they, what were they seeking to serve on the speaker? The injunction, injunction, not to do what, which was rendered moot by the speakers, you know, well, not to do what. I mean, not, clearly, an action had to be taken, and we know about the separation of powers. Okay. If you have an issue with an action that is taken by the executive, you cannot injunct. For example, you cannot injunct the executive from doing business. And let me tell you the absurdity. Me, I'm not a lawyer. But you see, I was just looking at the Constitution. I, I see that you want to wrap me up. I was just looking at the Constitution. Article 78.2. Article 78.2 says that the president shall appoint such number of ministers of state as may be necessary for the efficient running of the state. This is an action that is reserved for the executive president. But you see, the word efficient running of the state or the phrase efficient running of the state hasn't been defined. And so if I sit in my room and I define it to mean that the president must appoint only 15 ministers and I go to the Supreme Court to serve an injunction on the president until they interpret this, will the Supreme Court grant me that injunction? Because granting that injunction until they interpret this will mean that the president will not be able to form his government. That is the absurdity that we seem to be introducing with this latest action by the Supreme Court. So because the president has the right to appoint ministers, and I also have a definition of what efficient running of the state means. And I think 15 ministers can run the state. I can go and seek interpretation from the Supreme Court to, 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 to interpret it to mean that efficient running of the state can be done by 15 ministers. Mm -hmm. That is my, 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 my request of the Supreme Court. And based on that, I want them to injunct the president until they do the interpretation. Will they grant me that? Of course they will not because it's absurd, it's illogical. And that is what they seek, they, they seek to do with this process that they began, you know, as far back as Friday or Thursday, when it was said that the speaker was going to, you know, pronounce on the fate of these four members of parliament. They ran to court to serve an injunction on the speaker so that he will not be able to carry out what is expected of him under Article 97G. I mean, and then you have lawyers who, based on political expediency, cannot see the danger in rationalizing this conduct of the judiciary. And I think that, look, I have heard some people refer to the Chief Justice as the shadow or the deputy woman organizer of the new patriotic well, party. I mean, she must that, be careful that that, 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 that name that, doesn't that, stick. That, 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 she must that, be careful that, that, that name that, doesn't that, stick. That, 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 I mean, I don't that, think that, 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 I don't think that if we want to run, you see, these are the things we avoid. These are the things we avoid and endanger our democracy. People must be told in their faces that they are risking our democracy by their recklessness. You have, you have, Allah has winning. They are risking it by their recklessness and let them not hold anybody accountable when this democracy is, is, is put in danger. This democracy we all draw our powers from the constitution <laughs> and we all have been educated to read and write and understand and we know our responsibilities as they are enshrined in the constitution and we are all enjoined at every step of the way to defend the 1992 constitution and no group of people will be allowed to bastardize it. <laughs> Dr. Pagre, Bajit Ankwa made reference to, and this is why I bring in Professor Ram, for example. There's a reference which you are not alone in this. I think about a number of, of lawyers um, and then also some persons who identify with the law have made reference to the futuristic implications of the decision. Al-Hassan Sweeney. And so, 
And you cannot say, you shouldn't be. You see, there's a local proverb in Dagbani that you don't cut the branch that you sit on. And it seems like we are losing sight of the fact that we are all sitting on this branch called Ghana. We cannot be using the axe on the branch that we are sitting on and think that we will still suspend. Nobody is using. Let the judiciary be careful. Of course, the judiciary that they do not endanger this democracy. to politicize the judiciary this morning. It's wrong. I, it's wrong. By their it's actions, wrong. they are politicizing their, themselves. By their actions, they are politicizing the judiciary. What, what you are doing? I have told you. I have told, told, I have told you about the cases no, clearly, that are stuck no, come on. with the judiciary, no, come on. filed by the minority no, no, NDC MPs. How come that every case that has gone before okay, them from the executive gets expedited treatment? Well, how? The judiciary is an independent. And you think that? People should just, people should just lamely, people should just lamely agree with, with it as a rule of law. The rule of law must not only be done, the justice must not only be done, it must be seen to be done. Thank you. I didn't call her so. I said people are saying it on, on the streets. People are saying it on the street and she should not let us take. Your microphones are off. And now, let me say this. Alassane Sweeney. I am not going to come back to you on this. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm not. Because you finished making your point and you were about rounding up. Yes, I was about. I would want you to double down on that reference of the Chief Justice. I think that That's not out of no, out of respect. Especially and for the hey, Dr. Paul Grip, watch it down. Yeah, I haven't yes, called yes. you into this. I haven't called you into this conversation. Yes, I am speaking to Al Hassan Suhim. Family and friends. Family and friends. Albert, yes. Yes. Albert, yes. Albert, <laughs> Al -Hassan. Albert, to be very sincere with you, I am one of the people who have defended the judiciary and have always sought to uh, encourage many people to show it respect. Because, you see, it is the last institution when our politics fail us that we will all rely on to bring us back on the track of uh, you know, democracy. And I am obviously also becoming worried that their actions don't seem to engender the kind of confidence they will need to whip us, the political players, in line when our democracy no, is endangered. And I did well. not, and I have never, and I will never refer to the Chief Justice as the woman organizer of the New Patriotic so Party. But what I have said... No, no, no. I did not, and I will never do that. Okay. So, but what I have said you, you, you have, is that references not, have been you, you, made to her yeah. in that manner, okay. and I hope so she you, will be mindful. So you... <laughs> that is what I wanted you to make clear and make also that particular indication yeah. of what you meant because yes. i would not count i have not any way. and i will never refer to her as the woman organizer and but, but, but references, references have been made to her in that manner to it of what the references have been made to her in that manner and she has to be conscious of it references to where references do not do not alas and we end here do not that's fine